we're diving into a topic that affects many, obstructive sleep apnea. We will discuss symptoms, risk factors, screening tools, diagnosis, and management. Remember, this video is for educational purposes only. Obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, is a sleep-related breathing disorder. It involves recurrent episodes of complete or partial upper airway obstruction during sleep, despite ongoing respiratory effort. These episodes lead to intermittent hypoxemia, hypercapnia, and sleep fragmentation. Notably, OSA doesn't cause daytime hypercapnia unless severe or overlapping with other conditions, such as obesity hypoventilation syndrome or COPD. Globally, nearly 1 billion adults aged 30 to 69 are estimated to have OSA. In the U.S., about 26% of adults aged 30 to 70 have sleep apnea, with 25 to 30% of men and 9 to 17% of women affected. Prevalence rates are rising, yet OSA remains underdiagnosed due to low awareness and evolving diagnostic criteria. OSA is primarily associated with obesity, as excess neck and pharyngeal tissue narrows the airway. Its prevalence increases with age and is more common in men, though rates equalize between men and women after age 50. Genetic predisposition and certain ethnic backgrounds, including Hispanic, Black, and Asian populations, increase susceptibility. Additional contributing factors include alcohol or tobacco use, sedative use, sleeping supine, and comorbid conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, hypothyroidism, and acromegaly. Anatomical features like enlarged tonsils, recessed jaw, macroglossia, large neck circumference, adenotonsillar hypertrophy in children, nasal obstruction, and deviated septum further heighten the risk. During sleep, upper airway dilator muscles relax, especially during REM sleep, leading to airway collapse in susceptible individuals, this results in inspiratory flow limitation, hypoxemia, and hypercapnia, triggering sympathetic activation and arousal. Chronic intermittent hypoxia contributes to cardiometabolic sequelae. OSA's pathophysiological consequences include sympathetic activation, leading to hypertension and arrhythmias, endothelial dysfunction and metabolic dysregulation, such as insulin resistance, are common. Neurocognitive effects include impaired attention and mood regulation due to sleep fragmentation. OSA presents with both nocturnal and daytime symptoms. At night, patients often experience loud habitual snoring, witnessed apneas or gasping episodes, choking during sleep, restless or fragmented sleep, nocturia, night sweats, and a dry mouth or sore throat upon waking. During the day, hallmark features include excessive daytime sleepiness, morning headaches, difficulty concentrating or memory impairment, irritability, mood disturbances, depression, and reduced libido or erectile dysfunction. Despite seemingly adequate sleep duration, individuals frequently report feeling unrefreshed and fatigued, leading to impaired daily functioning and decreased quality of life. Physical findings in OSA include elevated BMI and a thick neck. A crowded oropharynx, nasal congestion, and enlarged tonsils are common. Hypertension and metabolic syndrome are also associated. These findings help in identifying individuals at risk for OSA. OSA can lead to serious multi-system complications if left untreated. Cardiovascular effects include resistant hypertension, coronary artery disease, arrhythmias such as atrial fibrillation, heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonale, stroke, and sudden cardiac death. Metabolic complications involve insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, and fatty liver disease. Neurocognitive consequences include daytime sleepiness, poor attention, memory impairment, depression, and anxiety. Renal effects include nocturnal hypertension and albuminuria, while other associated problems include erectile dysfunction, gastroesophageal reflux, increased perioperative risk, and a higher likelihood of driving accidents due to impaired alertness. Screening for OSA commonly utilizes the Stop-Bang Questionnaire and the Epworth Sleepiness Scale. The Stop-Bang tool assesses eight risk factors, snoring, tiredness, or daytime sleepiness, observed apneas, high blood pressure, body mass index above 35, age over 50, neck circumference greater than 40 centimeters, 
and male gender. Scores of 0 to 2 indicate low risk, 3 to 4 intermediate risk, and 5 to 8 high risk of OSA. The Epworth Sleepiness Scale evaluates the likelihood of dozing in various situations such as reading, watching television, or sitting quietly, assigning a score from 0 to 3 for each. A total score of 10 or higher suggests excessive daytime sleepiness and warrants further clinical evaluation for possible sleep apnea. The gold standard for diagnosing obstructive sleep apnea is an overnight polysomnography, which comprehensively evaluates sleep architecture and breathing disturbances. This study records multiple physiological parameters, including brain activity through EEG to identify sleep stages, eye movements via EOG to distinguish REM from non-REM sleep, and muscle tone through EMG to detect limb activity or bruxism. Heart rate and rhythm are assessed by ECG, while nasal airflow sensors and respiratory effort belts differentiate obstructive from central apnea. Pulse oximetry monitors oxygen desaturation events, and position and snoring sensors identify positional apnea and snoring frequency. Together, these measurements provide a detailed assessment of apnea severity and its impact on cardiopulmonary function during sleep. Polysomnography defines obstructive sleep apnea through key parameters, including apnea, hypopnea, and the apnea-hypopnea index. Apnea refers to a 90% or greater reduction in airflow for at least 10 seconds, while hypopnea involves a 30% reduction in airflow for at least 10 seconds, accompanied by a 3-4% to oxygen desaturation or arousal. The apnea-hypopnea index quantifies the number of these events per hour of sleep and determines severity mild for 5 to 14 events, moderate for 15 to 29, and severe for 30 or more. Diagnosis requires an AHI of at least 5 with symptoms such as snoring, gasping, or excessive sleepiness, or an AHI of 15 or more regardless of symptoms. Additional measures like the oxygen desaturation index, arousal index, and sleep efficiency provide insight into nocturnal hypoxemia and sleep quality. The Home Sleep Apnea Test is a simplified diagnostic tool for high-probability, uncomplicated OSA cases. It doesn't measure EEG and is unsuitable for patients with significant cardiopulmonary disease. It's a convenient option for moderate to severe OSA diagnosis in specific populations. Differential diagnosis of OSA includes several sleep and respiratory disorders with overlapping symptoms. Central sleep apnea involves pauses in breathing due to absent respiratory effort rather than airway obstruction, often associated with heart failure or opioid use. Obesity hypoventilation syndrome presents with daytime hypercapnia in obese patients, while simple snoring lacks apneas or desaturations. Upper airway resistance syndrome causes arousals from increased airway resistance without frank apneas. Nocturnal asthma or COPD overlap leads to wheezing and nocturnal dyspnea, and periodic limb movement disorder produces sleep fragmentation from repetitive leg jerks. Other mimickers include insomnia, narcolepsy, restless leg syndrome, and hypothyroidism, which can worsen or resemble OSA. Evaluation should include cardiovascular, metabolic, respiratory, endocrine, and lifestyle assessments, such as ECG, fasting glucose, spirometry, thyroid and sex hormone testing, and review of alcohol or sedative use to identify contributing comorbidities Positive airway pressure therapy is the first-line treatment for moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea and for symptomatic mild cases. It works by delivering pressurized air through a nasal, oral, or oronasal interface to prevent upper airway collapse during sleep. The mechanism involves providing positive and expiratory pressure that acts as an air splint, maintaining pharyngeal patency, reducing airway resistance, and eliminating apneas, hypopneas, and snoring. Continuous positive airway pressure delivers a constant pressure and is standard for most patients, while auto-adjusting PAP adapts pressure in real time for positional or REM-related apnea. Bilevel PAP provides different pressures for inspiration and expiration and is useful in CPAP intolerance, obesity hypoventilation, or COPD overlap. Nasal EPAP devices are non-powered, portable options that create resistance during exhalation for mild to moderate cases or for patients unable to tolerate standard CPAP. Positive airway pressure therapy requires proper titration, adherence, and monitoring to achieve optimal outcomes in obstructive sleep apnea. Absolute contraindications include untreated pneumothorax, severe bullous lung disease, hemodynamic instability, active vomiting, 
and inability to protect the airway, while relative cautions include nasal obstruction, claustrophobia, recent upper airway surgery, cognitive impairment, or poor motivation. CPAP titration is performed during overnight polysomnography, with pressures typically starting at 4 to 5 centimeters H2O and adjusted upward to eliminate apneas, snoring, and desaturation, averaging 8 to 12 centimeters H2O. Auto-adjusting PAP and BiPAP settings accommodate individual needs, with BiPAP providing higher inspiratory pressures. Common issues such as dry mouth, mask discomfort, aerophagia, and skin irritation are managed with humidifiers, mask adjustments, or pressure modifications. Successful therapy requires adherence for at least four hours per night on most nights, with early follow-up and telemonitoring to reinforce compliance and troubleshoot device-related challenges. Lifestyle modification plays a crucial role in managing obstructive sleep apnea, particularly through weight reduction, as even a 10% decrease in body weight can significantly lower apnea severity. Patients should avoid alcohol, sedatives, and opioids, especially before bedtime, as these substances relax airway muscles and worsen obstruction. Positional therapy, such as sleeping on the side or with slight head elevation, helps prevent airway collapse. Regular physical activity and a balanced diet support overall respiratory health and weight control. Bariatric surgery can substantially improve or resolve sleep apnea in obese individuals, though some residual disease may remain. Additionally, GLP-1 receptor agonists like semaglutide and tirazepatide are emerging as effective pharmacologic options for weight loss, indirectly improving OSA outcomes. Management of obstructive sleep apnea may include oral appliance therapy and surgical interventions when continuous positive airway pressure is not tolerated or effective. Mandibular advancement devices work by moving the lower jaw forward to enlarge the airway and are most suitable for patients with mild to moderate OSA or CPAP intolerance, though they require regular dental and sleep study follow-up and may cause occlusal changes, gum irritation, or drooling. Surgery for OSA is indicated primarily when CPAP is not tolerated or fails, anatomic obstruction is clearly identified, or OSA is severe with surgically correctable features. Surgical options include adenotonsillectomy, which is first-line therapy in children with tonsillar hypertrophy and uvula palatopharyngoplasty, which removes redundant soft palate tissue but may be ineffective. Maxillomandibular advancement, which repositions both jaws forward, is an effective surgical treatment for severe or anatomically obstructive OSA, significantly improving the apnea hypopnea index. Hypoglossal nerve stimulation, also known as Inspire Therapy, is an implantable device used to treat moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea in adults who cannot tolerate CPAP therapy. It functions by stimulating the hypoglossal nerve to activate the tongue muscles and move the tongue forward, preventing airway collapse during sleep. The system includes a small pacemaker-like device implanted in the chest that connects to a breathing sensor near the ribs, which detects inspiration and synchronizes mild electrical pulses with each breath. It is indicated for patients with an apnea hypopnea index between 15 and 65, a body mass index below 32 to 35, and no complete concentric palatal collapse on endoscopy. Contraindications include central or mixed apnea, severe obesity, significant cardiopulmonary or neuromuscular disease, and inability to operate the device. Emerging treatment options for OSA include noradrenergic and anti-muscarinic agents, which improve airway tone. Intraoral negative pressure therapy uses negative pressure to prevent airway collapse. These innovative approaches expand the therapeutic landscape for OSA management. Adjunctive therapies for obstructive sleep apnea include myofunctional therapy, which strengthens oropharyngeal muscles, and management of nasal obstruction or rhinitis with intranasal steroids or surgery to improve airflow. Endocrine disorders such as hypothyroidism and acromegaly should be addressed as they can worsen OSA. Oxygen supplementation may be used when hypoxemia persists despite optimal PAP therapy or intolerance to PAP. For residual daytime sleepiness, stimulants like modafinil, armodafinil, or solium fetal may be prescribed. Special considerations include managing OSA during pregnancy due to risks of gestational hypertension and preeclampsia, using CPAP as first-line therapy, in children, adenotonsillectomy often resolves OSA. Perioperative management should minimize sedatives, maintain PAP therapy, and ensure close monitoring. 
and untreated OSA causing excessive sleepiness significantly increases driving accident risk, requiring treatment before clearance to drive. For more educational content, like, share, and subscribe to Quick IM with Dr. Aid. Your support helps us create even more valuable content for you.